let us study how to compute longest linden subsequences. This is joint work together with Hideo, Tomihiro, Tomas, and Simon. For that, let us briefly explain and review what linden means. So a string is called linden. If it is lexicographically smaller, denoted by this smaller symbol, then all its proper suffixes. For instance, a, ab, and aab are linden, but not aba or abab. Because here in particular we have a border, meaning that this is a string that is both suffix and prefix, and a border is always lexicographically smaller than the entire string itself. In our setting, we assume as an input a text T of length n, where the ice character is from an alphabet sigma, where small sigma denotes its size, and we assume that sigma is integer, meaning that we can bound its size by n to the power of order of 1. Powerful tool regarding Linden is the Linden factorization, which factorizes your text into t factors in this case, where you get a sequence of non-increasing factors, non-increasing with respect to the lexicographic order, where each factor is Linden and called a Linden factor. The factorization is uniquely defined and it can be computed in linear time. In this example here, you have three factors and you can see that the factors form a lexicographically decreasing sequence. Now what can you do with this factorization? You can compute the longest linen substring, because that is just the last linen factor. If you don't believe that, you can take any arbitrary substring of your text, and it is either contained in a linen factor, and then you can just extend it to a longer one and get the answer, hopefully, or it crosses a border, like in this case, where you can see that you just take the last part which crosses the border and the first part which crosses the border, and you can see that this last part is a prefix of a la later linden, uh, linden factor, and this later linden factor is lexicographically smaller than a former linen factor having this, these first characters as a suffix. But then you know that this one here is a prefix of that later linen factor, so it is lexicographically smaller, and this one is lexicographically smaller, this factor, than the former factor, and now we know that this one here is a suffix of the former factor which has to be larger by the definition of Linden and so far we get that this suffix here is actually lexicographically smaller than this prefix here so our chosen substring cannot be Linden. So we can find the longest Linden substring in linear time but what can we do if we look at subsequences? If we want to compute the longest something subsequence, then we usually stick to dynamic programming, or DP. But does DP work in our case? And the answer is, I don't know. So in this example, it's the same example as before, if we look at the solutions up to a certain position, like for uh, instance up to 9, then the answer are these green underlined characters, which are done there. If we go to 11, then it's, uh, the answer are these blue characters. And up to 12, the answer are these red characters. But it doesn't seem like you can take a solution and append a character and then work something with the previous solutions to get a new solution. So we couldn't find something with DP, but still got the result that we could compute, tackle our problem in cubic time with linear space and could enhance that, but that's not part of the talk, but written in the paper that we can compute that also online by blowing up the space in a little bit of time and further the time 
with the question if we can compute the longest common one. But how can we compute if we don't do it with CP? Now we took the try of all Linden subsequences. This is now just a prefix of the previous example, just to put the, the try on the slide to, to keep it reasonably small. The properties are that we labeled the nodes of the try such that the label is of a node V called CV. It's the end of the leftmost occurrence of a string read from the root to this node when considering that string as a subsequence of the text. For instance, AB can be found, this is first A and this is then the B, at ending position 6. And another property is that if we have set subsequence and we remove the last character, then we are at the parent. And because of that, this, this smaller subsequence obviously can end previously and therefore we get that the label of the parent is always smaller than the label of the string itself. Nice property is that the leaves are Linden subsequences and what we want to find is the longest Linden subsequence which is just the deepest leaf. So just build the try on all Linden subsequences and take the deepest leaf and we're done. Unfortunately just building this try can take us exponential time because the number of distinct Linden subsequences can be exponentially and that is tight if you look at uh, in put string like t equals to 1 up to n, where these are the characters or the character ranks, and you get a type bound. Actually, this, this number, to compute it efficiently, it's unknown how to do that. We only know the expected number due to a paper last year. So, the idea would be to build this try on the fly, and for that we need to know which nodes can lead us to Linden subsequences. And for that we need two definitions. The first one is for pre-Linden. So a string is called pre-Linden if it is a prefix of a Linden string. Second one is that a pre-Linden string is called immature if it is not Linden. For instance, it is a proper prefix of a Linden string. The key observation now is that a node has at most one child that is immature. And we can determine this child by using the minimal period. For instance, we have here b, b, c, b, b. And I want to append a, a new character. So we, we move down. And if we, for instance, take the c, which corresponds to the period b, b, c, b, b, c, then it's immature. If it's smaller than c, like b or a, then we get a non, not pre-Linden word. So regardless of what we will append later on, we never get a Linden subsequence. Because for instance this a is always smaller than what, what's here, so you never can extend it to a, a Linden word. The other hand, if we append a d, then it instantaneously becomes Linden. So these are the nodes we are interested in. To formalize that, what we look at is for this Subsequence up to there, we take its length minus the period plus one. In this example, what we would look at is this character C because period is three, and this gives us the third character of W. Now, if this is the next character we look at, if it, that's equal, then we know that after preparing this next character, we get an immature subsequence. Or if this next character we append is larger, then it becomes Linden. Another property is, if it's immature, then we inherit from W its period. For W being Linden, this means that the period is the length of W itself, meaning that we compare with the first character. Finally, the prefix up to the minimal period P is always Linden because W is, is pre-Linden. Now what we actually want to have is not the try of all Linden subsequences, of, but the try of all pre-Linden subsequences. 
But now the leaves are not necessarily linden, like here, this AA, the pink ones. But it doesn't help us to represent the tri more efficiently. But now we can make use of a different technique to represent it implicitly by using a stack. And the stack is used to simulate a depth first search on the tri. And the stack stores the node labels, such that if we apply the stack onto the text, it gives us our pre-linen subsequence we're currently visiting. Like here, 4, 6, and 7, it's A, B, A. But not this alone, we augment the stack with the periods. So we store for each node level also its period. For instance, for A it's 1, for A, B it's 2. Why do we do that? Because then we can check this image share property more efficiently. Like assuming that we are now visiting the node V, then we look at our stack, the last period we have stored, which is 2, and we can compare our string, our substring, a subsequence we have already built with the ingoing edge of V. And the, impro the imager property says that we have to compare that, which is an A, with that, which is also an A, and therefore we know that V is imager. So, in total, we get linear space just by using the stack, but the time can be still exponentially. And the idea is that we explore in lexicographic order the try, but prune a node if its subtree cannot lead us to a longer linden subsequence. So if we visit a node u whose subsequence is lexicographically larger than a longer subsequence of an already visited node v, then we prune u. But why can we do that? For that, we make use of the following lemma, where we translate u and v into two strings u and v, just large letter. So we assume that v is a linden subsequence, and that if we do not prune u, that we, it leads us to a linden subsequence uw. So we can append some kind of string w to get it linden. Now, because we have already found v, it has to be lexicographically smaller because we did the DFS. Additionally, we want that v is at least as long as u, otherwise we cannot make a good assumption about uh, whether to prune or not. But if these assumptions hold, then we want to prove that vw so exists, it's linden, and it, VW is smaller than UW. So we would have already found UW, uh, VW before finding U. And with that, um, for the proof, what we want to do is that we take any suffix S of VW and show that this suffix is larger than VW. In the first case, if S is shorter than W, then we make use of UW because it's uh, linden. And additionally, we have a look at that two properties and we define a triangle relation where V triangle U means that V is lexicographically smaller than U and if we and V is not a prefix of U. So meaning if you compare U and V character wise, you would find a mismatching character where the mismatching character of V is smaller than the mismatching character of U. And you can easily see that for with these two properties this triangle relation holds. And it tells us that we can append any arbitrary string at the, the lexicographic order still holds in the same way. So we get that VW is lexicographically smaller than UW. And because UW is now is, is, is a linden word because of this uh, prerequisite, we know because S is a suffix of UW, it's larger than UW, but this is larger than VW, and we get our claim for the first case. In the second case, if S is longer than W, then we take a prefix of S that is a suffix of V. 
And then we can see again that the triangle relation now holds with V prime because V is a linear word. And therefore we can append the W and it still holds the lexicographic relation. And then we know that because V prime is a prefix of S, it is lexicographically smaller. But on the other hand, V prime is smaller than VW. So we get again our claim in the second case and we're done. Now, what can we make use of this lemma? So what do we want to do with that lemma? We maintain a dynamic array L such that in the else position, we store the text position I for which we know that there exists a linear subsequence W in T from one up to I, the I length prefix, such that this linen subsequence has length L. Initially, we just uh, make create this, this, this array uninitialized. And during our DFS, we lower the values of L. And during the DFS, which is done in lexicographic order, when visiting a node U at depth L, we prune U if the else entry is smaller than the level of U. To get an idea, let's look at the algorithmic execution where we have this initial state and we go down, for instance, to A, B, find these Luton subsequences and lower L at 1 and 2 to 4 and 6, then find A, D, B, and because D has ending position 5 while B had and in position 6, we could lower second position to 5. The same lowering process goes on for this sequence from B, C, B, C, C, D. Could lower L here. But if we note, for instance, for B, C, D, then we see for B, C, D, which has length 3. So we look up in the third entry. We see that there is a 3 stored, meaning that there is already a linear subsequence starting at 3, which is lexicographically smaller. So we have the properties, the prerequisites of our lemma, and therefore we are sure that we do not have to explore U. So admittingly, here in this example, we don't have to do anything because it's just a leaf. But if you imagine that our string is much longer, then you could expect that down there you have a long, a large subtree of U. So our observation is that we either decrement L, we prune a subtree, or we visit an immature child. Note that uh, immature child is not Linden, and therefore we cannot lower L. We can only lower L if we visit a Linden subsequence. But after initializing L, um, the domain is from 1 to n, and we only lower L, so we can decrement L at most n squared times. But the question is, after how many node visits we are sure that we can lower L? Now assume that we are at this green leaf here, or green node, and then we go to the right, and we don't find any node where we can lower L, ascend, don't find anything, ascend, and so on, until we find this blue node here. But on each level, we scan at most sigma many siblings, and we have at most n many nodes on the stack, which gives us n times sigma, nodes between two uh, L decrements. And because we have n squared L decrements, we get n cubed sigma many node visits. This translates to time if we can do the traversal in constant time, which we can do if we store at each text position i an array fi with length sigma, storing for each character the next character, the next position where the respective character appears. This gives us n sigma space because of these fi's, but the claimed time complexity. But actually we can shave off the sigma in the time and the space by using an RMQ uh, range maximum query data structure in a wavelet tree instead of the fi's. 
So what we want to do is that we only want to care about those nodes that lower L or are immature. So in this setting, we are we have visited a node label K, went down to a node with label I, could lower LL. And for instance, if we look at the node J, then it can only lower L, L, so it's the same depth as I, so it's the same L, if J is smaller than I, which equals to LL, because we have set it there. So what we want to consider are only those nodes with a level between K and LL. Between K, this means because we have this parent, the K, this means that the previous, so the, the subsequence omitting the, this last character and that K. So we can only start at this position. So in this range, we want to do some queries. And for that, we need the following two data structures, a uh, range maximum query data structure and a wavelet tree. Such that for an uh, interval chain, a character C, we can do an RMQ qu query for the maximum inside a given interval J and a range successor query. So for we search within this this interval for any character that is larger than c and for these characters we take the minimum now suppose that uh, we are at a node this node i and we have lowered l l to i with a subsequence w c so w is the subsequence up to the node k and we appended the c and assume that the period of W is P. What we want to do is that we want to do an RMQ query for finding inside these siblings a potential node where we can again lower uh, LL or find an immature node. So we do this query and if it's larger than our immature condition, then we know that there is something where we can lower, so there is a node where we can lower LL, so we use the wavelet tree to find this next node. If this is not true, we check the immature condition, so whether, whether there is an immature child. If there is one, then we just take this immature child and descend to it. There is nothing else to get because all other nodes don't contribute. If the answer is even here no, then we know that none of the sibling nodes contribute. So the final time complexity is as follows. Note again that we can lower L n squared times, so there are order of n squared nodes that lower L, and each such node can be found with a wavelet tree query in logarithmic time, but each of them can have order of n Image ancestors. So the number of image ancestors sum up to n cubed nodes. But each of them can be found in constant time by using an RMQ query. So in total, we have n squared log sigma for these nodes lowering L and n cubed for the image nodes, summing up to n cubed time. But the data structures altogether use linear space. In summary, we have studied how to compute the longest Linden subsequence in cubic time using linear space. The idea was to simulate a DFS on the try of all pre Linden subsequences with a stack. We used a wavelet tree together with an RMQ data structure to speed up the try navigation and to skip nodes that cannot lower L. And if you look closely, the output is actually not only the longest linen subsequence, but also the lexicographically smallest among these. And that's all. Thanks for listening and any questions are welcome.